Kevin Heffernan. How's it going, man? Excellent. How you doing, CJ? I'm doing well. Um, it is Friday, and all of a sudden, I'm at a point where the days are not just kind of bleeding together, and um, putting some more boundaries on my time between work and family time. So, nice. um, it, it, there is some semblance of a traditional Friday today. I think the weather's going to be a little bit warmer this weekend, if even just for a short period of time. Um, so, uh, I would say I'm doing well. How are you? Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Been a, been a crazy busy week, which has been great to to feel like uh, there's a big project to work on, which we'll talk about. But yeah, for the beginning of this quarantine, it was kind of like, which direction am I headed in? Which project should I be trying to start from scratch? Things like that. Uh, now there's a lot more direction, purpose, uh, at least until this Saturday. <laughs> well, um so for those that don't know, Kevin Heffernan is uh, one of the, the founders and partners of an organization called Rise Collaborative. And I think Rise Collaborative is, is super cool from what I've grown to uh, learn about it. Kevin, we first got connected um, so through some networking. I remember we were in, um, you know, in the agency world or different sales roles at the time and, and uh, fortunately stayed connected through the years. And I've always known you to be like a big Buffalo booster, um, a self-starter, creative guy, um, open-minded thinker, and, and something that I think, you know, certainly this community could, could use every ounce of that as it possibly can. But now you're doing Rise, Rise Collaborative. And um, uh, one of the things when, when I first like heard about this, um, I remember thinking like, what, what, what is, what is a collaborative and what is, what is rise collaborative? And I love the fact that on your website, you have the little column like WTF is rise. I think that's, <laughs> I think that's perfect. Like for, for people who maybe aren't hundred percent sure what it is now you guys, as you guys have proliferated a little bit, you guys are kind of like a media company where you produce videos and you have a podcast and a magazine and, um, you do, you guys are involved in, in events and things like that. So I think not only myself, but a lot of other people have a much better understanding for what you do. But for, for those that don't yet, why don't you answer the question, WTF is rise? Sure. Um, yeah, uh, and I'll touch on that word collaborative too and why we threw that in there. Um, it was uh, 2014 and I was working at the Martin Group, uh, an agency here in town. And uh, I was on a client that wasn't all that much fun and yet saw the rest of the agency being able to do some really cool, interesting work. And I thought, you know, let's, let's get something started where we can do this ourselves. And the idea was let's just sell some t-shirts, do cool designs, sell t-shirts. Uh, and that'll be a nice little side project to have some fun with. And we realized that you can't just create a market with no one knowing who you are. So we started putting together content on our website, on our social media that was about Buffalo uh, so that people would give us a follow. And then we'd be able to introduce that apparel to them uh, once they were already following us. And the apparel very quickly took a back seat and we started uh, creating a mission to start supporting small businesses by just doing a simple Friday blog about them. We'd ask them to DJ that blog. So we'd embed a 10 song playlist on Spotify right at the beginning, set the tone while you're reading about that business, looking at photos of them. Um, and then as that evolved, um, we really wanted to start growing our audience in a significant way. And we noticed that it wasn't very diverse. Um, it was a lot of people who were just like us, uh, young 20 somethings, uh, West side. And we found that we could not literally cross main street here in Buffalo, our, our segregation line. Um, we weren't really doing well in the suburbs. Um, so we thought like, okay, a lot of this is a social media algorithm that's saying like, Hey, you like this? I'll show it to people just like you. And we thought let's sidestep social media here and we started a newsprint uh called no boundaries and it was really meant to be this content rich flyer uh that we put ten thousand copies out into the community for free uh funded by the small businesses who advertised in it and um that evolved into a magazine because when the public was still around we came out twice a year the public was doing amazing work by coming out weekly 
but when we did come out, it would be the public here looking big, bright, and beautiful, and us next to it, a little smaller, a little crappier paper. Uh, and we thought, like, let's, let's level up. If it's only twice a year, let's make something that really knocks people's socks off. So it was the fall of 2018, I think, 20, spring 2019, we launched it in magazine format. Um, and we've done three of those thus far. Uh, we had a fourth for this spring that's sort of indefinitely on hold until things come back online because the biggest part we do with that is we put them out into coffee shops, restaurants. One, we need those to be open, but two, yeah. we also need people to be comfortable with literally picking up something that's been sitting out in a shop. We don't know how, what that's going to look like when things reopen. We've even thought about having you know, free coffee available on Elmwood and Bidwell and just hand somebody a fresh one right out of the box something like that. But um, briefly, just the rest of the aspects of rides are um, when that newsprint was out, a woman named Holly Kirkpatrick approached us and said, hey, I, I saw your newsprint. I really like it. I'd love to produce a podcast. Um, and if it could be under your network, that would be great. So we met for coffee in uh, late 2016. And she came prepared with a uh, whole set of documents on why she wanted to do it, how she would do it, and the perceived measurements on its results. So we do uh, episodes that are about seven, eight minutes in length and cover average Buffalonians. We've covered uh, blacksmiths, retired politicians, female head brewers, covered Queen City roller derby women, um, covered Rick Smith and his plans for Silo City. And yeah, I listened, I listened to a couple of them. Um, there's a couple that, that stand out to me uh there was one about the pit bull shelter yeah yeah trainables and then and what was the one about that woman who was like a drug addict and had been in and out of rehab and um you don't have to share her name if you well i mean you did a podcast about her but it was just a really interesting story about how she was able to like reclaim her life and how she's now kind of a positive influence for a lot of people who um are in bad situations yeah, she had definitely hit uh, rock bottom and now is running the Mad Urban uh, Hope Garden Center. That's what it which is. Which is yeah. uh, home for um, women who, are, who were at one time homeless and are trying to sort of transition back into uh, security, consistency, prosperity. Um, so yeah, that one was great. And what Holly does with this is it's, a, um, it's not necessarily this format of uh, sitting down and chatting. Holly will sort of do a ton of research in advance. Then she will do a lot of uh, audio recording in that person's place of work or in that person's home. And then at the very end, it's a sit down interview. So she sort of creates a, a full scene that's sort of an NPR style. I was just gonna uh, say, it's, like, it's just like NPR. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. Thank you. It's fantastic content. Yeah, so the, the latest evolution in everything we're doing, the, the podcast will return uh, likely next year. Um, uh, and the magazine will return, as I said, this summer or potentially this fall. But uh, video production is, is sort of our main thing. It's been our financial bread and butter. And it's what has set us apart uh, from other platforms digitally here in Western New York. So yeah, as you mentioned, it's, it's a media network um, with all those pieces pulled together and we want to grow into something that can consistently be producing content from news to documentaries um, and to live off of the dollars of sponsors primarily and that is either producing partner content for businesses who want to get real specific about their story and tell it in our voice or they sponsor some content saying like we like what you're doing uh, we just like to put our name on it and that was on a successful upswing um, up until uh, COVID. So, I mean, I'm happy to be honest about that. That, that along with so many other businesses, just dried us right up. Um, but we're still active and still finding stories to tell and things like that. We had some money in the bank uh, that we were putting aside for a studio for next year. So we're able to keep the lights on and keep producing content. We've had an incredible intern this year who's helped us out quite a bit too. Um, so we plan on coming out of this stronger. Our weekly email has kind of become a place where a lot of people have replied saying thanks for sharing some good positive news. That comes out later today, um, as soon as I wrap up a couple more videos that I can put into it. Um, and yeah, we've got a really positive outlook for the future. Our audience is so young 
that um, as long as we keep doing what we're doing, producing content that they care about in a voice that they relate to, uh, we're going to be able to grow and I think compete with the major news media in town um, in a matter of a couple of years. That's cool. Yeah. Um, this is really a time for leadership, right? Um, did, did you happen to see the, there, somebody posted a video on YouTube and it, some genius person did like a mashup of like all of like the commercials from big brands with like soft piano music and, and slow pans across empty football stadiums and, and public parks and things like that. Did you happen to see that? No. Oh, you, you have to, I'll, I'll try uh, and find it and send it to you afterwards. It's basically making fun of how like every single big giant brand is, is approaching this with like the same PR strategy and has, and literally has the same commercial. And like, well, I appreciate like anybody who wants to put like positive sentiments out there in the world. I think, you know, most, most of all, it was just a bunch of people in the boardroom thinking like, oh, okay, how do we spin this? you know, for our, how, how do we make our brand look good through all this without actually doing much. Um, so when I, when I say this is a time for leadership, I don't mean just anything. I mean, uh, real substantive um, influence on the community and what I think that you guys can, how you guys can benefit from that is that you guys literally have been doing it for years, like before, before COVID. Um, it's clear to be a, a central part of your mission to help businesses thrive, right? Tell stories and I think establish a greater sense of place uh, in terms of what it means to live in Buffalo and Western New York. And I think that you guys already have the audience probably that's, that's looking for that. It, undoubtedly the resources available to continue doing that maybe have peeled back a little bit. It may be a little bit harder. You have to do more things virtually. So for you guys, maybe like you may have to make some compromises on production quality. I don't really know. Right. Um, <clears throat> somebody like me, you know, I'm, I've, I've never, you know, I don't, I don't have a nice camera or, you know, for, for my business or just myself. Um, so like these, these zoom calls, these recorded zoom chats are perfect for me. It's, mm -hmm. it's all, it's, it's the, it's the production quality I'm used to putting out there. Um, but for somebody like you guys that maybe, maybe that's hard, but undoubtedly, well, I guess this is just a roundabout way of saying, I think that, you know, um, we, we need leaders right now. And I have no doubt that, you know, you, uh, and your partners and, and rise will, will continue to be that. So keep on, man. we need you. We need you. Thank you. Yeah. I think, uh, Drew Brown and I founded this together and there was always sort of a bit of a, a pragmatic view and a wider view of what's going on in Buffalo, which is we're broke, right? There's definitely some money around town, but there's a lot of small businesses struggle every day. There's not a lot of population to support somebody who's got a wild idea for opening up a shop and things like that. And when that happens, it, it makes it easier for a lot of chains to move in, be those yeah. restaurants or stores. Um, and as soon as people say like, ah, I'm just going to go there. I'm just going to buy it from there. You know, 85, 90% of the money you just spent heads right out of town. Um, and these are dollars that a lot of Western New Yorkers work their tails off for, and we just shoot them right out of town. And so the idea being, let's, let's highlight these, the beauty of these local restaurants, these local retailers who are taking a chance, buying up inventory and hoping people walk into their store. Um, the more that we can support. It's not just a nice thing. I think that often, so often comes across like, wouldn't it be nice of you to shop local? It's a smart thing to keep that money in town and to have the owners of that shop, that restaurant, then turn around and spend money with you in one fashion or another. Yeah. Um, it would make our region so much stronger. Um, you know, if there wasn't a line 80 cars deep at Chick-fil-A every day, <laughs> it's just, uh, it's, it's a, it's a long view on the local economy to keep that money here, however you can, because then it's going to make its way back into your own wallet. Yeah. I've never had Chick-fil-A. Um, me either. Really? <laughs> I, I definitely want to try it one day, but like to me, the, this idea of waiting in line for a, a fast food chicken sandwich is just preposterous. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that, that is a real, I love that distinction that, Supporting small business is not some 
uh, nice to do thing, right? It's not some, it's not altruism, right? It's mm-hmm. smart. It benefits you. Yeah. Um, I like that. That's, and you, you've, you stated a pretty clear case. So, um, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, leadership and, and how Rise is continuing to uh, lead people in this community. One of the things we just talked about before, um, before we started recording is that you guys are working on a virtual concert. Now it is 9.23 AM right now on Friday morning. And I understand this concert is going, um, is going live tomorrow night. So maybe we're looking at something like 36 ish hours from now, maybe 32. I don't know. Um, Oh, you're stressing me out. What's going on? (laughs) Tell me about this. Um, what are you so, doing? Yeah, Queen City Quarantine concert. Uh, briefly on the background, uh, Emily Perryman, um, who heads up Unite by Night, she's actually also just got promoted to the head of institutional advancement over at Damon. I was just um, going to say, she used to be at Trocare, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I met her. She, one, I met her once when she was at Trocare. That name's yeah. Yeah, she she left for Damon maybe a year year and a half ago uh to lead up their marketing efforts and now yeah just just was promoted yesterday uh so congratulations to her but uh never wanted to sit on her hands she's also uh at uh, unite by night which she founded which is uh, this league of young professionals who will pick a nonprofit um or multiple nonprofits, and they spend 12 months with them uh there's there's attorneys there's accountants there's people who can do some design and some web development and they'll help that nonprofit through uh everything um and it's usually very small nonprofits that wouldn't have the funding to reach out to an agency uh or uh, you know any money at all right they help get them on their feet get them looking modern things like that giving them a modern communication strategy and send them on their way and so they do this uh for again the nonprofits who are working with people in our community they're also those ones that are so small staff that would have never thought about marketing in the first place. Right. Um, and they kind of say like, we'll take care of it for you. Just tell us what you're passionate about, what your needs are, what your impact is, things like that. So Unite by Night is a really great group and the, the collaboration aspect of our name, um, it started with Drew and I not really knowing how to do much other than Instagram. And we thought, well, we can do anything. We just grab the right person to collaborate with. Uh, we'll collaborate with somebody to build our website, things like that. So collaborating with Unite by Night here is their idea to do this Queen City quarantine concert. And the idea being, yes, let's get some, some artists back out there uh, in front of people. And uh, let's find a way to have it help these local nonprofits that are very small. Um, there are certainly large nonprofits in town that are doing incredible work and are very deserving of our dollars. Um, they're included in here too. Something like Feed More Western New York has already announced that they're critical on food supplies and cash. Um, so they're going to be ones that will benefit from this. But there's also much smaller ones like the Erie County Restorative Justice Coalition, Western New York Book Arts Center, Volunteer Lawyers Project. Um, I'm going about this in a roundabout way of telling you about the concert. No, no. Uh, well, what I like it is I like I and mean, we'll, we'll get there. Right. And then what I'll yeah. try and do is I'll try and cut up a little clip of it and put it out on social media. But um, yeah, I've got, before, I've got, before you um, tell me what's going on, I think it's important to it's important for you and me. And I think quite frankly, for anybody else um, to know what this is benefiting and like how this came about. So I'm glad that you're clarifying. Yeah. Yeah. So to, to put it out on the table, like once every, every bit of this hit, right. Uh, you heard about Lexington Ave throwing these dance parties with yeah. blasting off porches. Right. My yeah. wife and I even put up a sign that said, listen to more music. And for a while at five thirty each night, we were blasting out the window when the weather was a bit nicer, uh, all throughout this, this COVID piece. And that's telling because we're, we're upset. We're a little bit fearful or we're just losing our minds with some cabin fever and, the stress of the unknown here. And I think people turn to music. They turn to musicians who've written something that makes us feel better. Um, And so that's part of this concert, right? A lot of those musicians, they're not just accountants by day and playing some bars on the weekends as a side gig. There's quite a few in this town who support their families off of the gigs that they get the recording sessions that they're able to afford thanks to those gigs and touring a little bit now and then. And all of that has been taken away from them. So uh, we want to give them an opportunity here to play. And what this is going to look like is a VH1 pop-up video. Uh, so every artist pre-submitted uh, or pre-recorded and submitted a 15-minute set. 
Um, and at the bottom, we've edited on a ribbon that says, if you want to tip this artist, here's their Venmo. If you want to support the nonprofit they're paying for, here's a real quick bit.ly link that you could type in on your phone while you're watching. Fantastic. And um, throughout, we have little tidbits and factoids about the artist and about the nonprofit popping up like a VH1 pop-up video. Sometimes with a little photo, uh, sometimes funny, sometimes serious. And by the end of it, you're going to know and love that musician and you're going to be introduced to and grow to love that nonprofit and their work too. And so over 15 minutes, all those pop-ups coming at you, you're going to be more likely to say like, all right, all right, I, I can Venmo this guy five bucks or I can go on that, that link and hand over 10 bucks. And we know that not everybody watching is going to have the means. So at least by the end of it, uh, they will be more familiar with the artists, more familiar with the nonprofits so that when they do come back into those means, hopefully they remember these organizations. Um, so we have 12 artists. Uh, so that's going to end up being about three full hours of mayhem uh, that we have perfect. to upload. Yeah, what and time I does it start? It starts at seven. So what, when, you, when I said you're stressing me out is that uh, I, we've, my intern and I have completed all the pop-up videos right, for every artist. What we need to do is we're going to string them together into 30-minute video files. And on top of these artists all doing this, we have Buffalo celebrities, Buffalo celebrities hopping in, saying hello. So a couple news anchors, a couple Buffalo Sabres, Buffalo Buttes hockey team, um, and then founders of different organizations and things like that that are going to hop in, say hello, thanks for tuning in, and enjoy our next act, the Humble Braggers, and things like that. So That's we get cool. to tie those together, tie two acts together, and we end up having about a 30, 32-minute video. We'll upload those one at a time to our YouTube, to our Facebook, to our Instagram TV. So today... So that's where people can watch it, like YouTube, Facebook, or IG? Yeah, and that's what's going to differentiate this from one of the many uh, live shows we've seen going up. Because a live show, oftentimes if you miss it in that moment, you missed it forever. Uh, with this, it's a permanent file upload, just like any other documentary we've done or things like that. So... It's so long as those uh, URLs don't change for those nonprofits, if yeah. you see this a month from now, that you can still go there and make those donations. So Dude, we're hoping that that'll expand the impact for everyone involved. This, it actually is a documentary as well, I would argue. Because think about this, like, like I, have, I have two small children right now, four and two. One day they're going to like learn about this. Because I think this will be significant enough where eventually it'll be mentioned to them or they're going to learn about it in school or something. They're going to be like, wow, what was that like? And like what, what, one of the things I kind of like is like we're leaving a paper trail, um, right? It, like into society and like how we currently dealt with all of this now. That doesn't really exist for the Spanish flu you know, 110, 115 years ago, um, good, bad, or indifferent, I think like, will like a lot of people will want to look back on this time and say, you know, this is what we were doing. This is how we were connecting. This is how we were making the most of it. So, um, you know, in addition to it being something that will be fun to consume live, and I guarantee you that, you know, I will, when at seven o'clock tomorrow night, like I will come up to my, my office, I'll kick my feet up. I'll probably have two beers, and I'll, you know, I'll, uh, I'll watch that on YouTube and like, and that'll be fun. But in addition to that, like what you're talking about, um, uh, like serving a purpose, like I, it serves a purpose now, but also I think like months, years from now, I think that's cool. That's part of the reason why I'm doing this, by the way, um, is because like, I mean, who am I to just like, like have a podcast? That's why, like, I haven't really named it. And every time I, refer to it. I put it in finger quotes. Uh, but a big, a big piece of it is one, I was thinking about doing this for a really long time. And now I feel like with this whole quarantine, every excuse has been eliminated. Right. And two, a big part of it was we're going through something right now. And I just kind of want to have a voice in it. Um, I don't think that anything that I'm going to do is going to help people like not catch COVID. I don't think it's going to help them recover faster. That's what these like medical professionals are doing. Right. But um, if, if nothing else, if I can provide a little bit of content that a couple of people would like um, and, you know, I can kind of like look back on this and say, all right, here's an opportunity where I just showed up. If nothing else, 
then you know I'll be happy about that. And you are doing a heck of a lot more than what I'm doing. You are doing a heck of a lot more than showing up, right? You guys are the show. And um, I, think that's, uh, I think that's really cool. Cool as in fun, and, but also like legitimately admirable. So good on you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, that, it's funny you mentioned how that is sort of a documentary of this. Uh, Brian Grunert, friend of ours, uh, White Bike. He, he just, he was on here. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that yet. Yeah. Is that coming out in your next email? Uh, I haven't emailed, I haven't emailed any of them out, but I'm going okay. to be emailing them out soon. Yeah. We recorded <laughs> that, on, we recorded on Monday night. Conversation. It was insane. Um, <laughs> it was insane. So uh, we spoke for about an hour and 40 minutes. Um, <clears throat> we recorded on Monday night. We started recording at nine. So, um, and uh, you know, Gruner and I were, we're, I would say we're pretty friendly, right? Meaning we're not, we're not best buds. We're not hanging out all the time, texting, you know, daily, weekly, anything like that. I would say um, a couple times a year we get together um, and I always have a good time with him. We have respect for one another professionally and we just joy, uh, enjoy one another's company. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm still, he was the second episode I've ever recorded. This one is the fourth. And um, I'm still figuring out what it was, right? And so we started just talking about how we're doing in this whole situation. And we're both business owners. So uh, we, we started talking a little bit about business. And then he went into politics, which I thought was really interesting. Because normally, like, I, I don't plan for this to be like a political um, themed thing. But um, the thing is about him is he like he's very thoughtful about it and you can and and you can see that whatever he believes politically is tied to a greater ambition of something that like I feel like everybody can get behind. Right. So even if you don't agree with his political persuasions, you agree with what his political persuasions he believes are trying to yeah, um, goals like exactly. So um, so. Yeah, I thought it was great. And I was like, this is, it was, it was just really cool. We talked about certain conversations that you really only have when you're talking with Brian Gruner. And it yeah. Was awesome, so, yeah, I had one of those, uh, I can't even remember now if that was this week or last week, uh, with him too over Facebook Messenger. But, uh, ultimately they were, they were loved the idea of this concert and he and his team designed us a poster that oh, then it's awesome. sort of commemorate it. And at first I was like, kind of a ah, poster. And he's like, dude, you got to think about this as like a moment in time that people are going to remember. And they collect posters from concerts that they've been to uh, from tours and things like that. And I was like, yeah. So they're actually um, comping something up for us today. Uh, that'll just kind of show it on a wall in a frame. Uh, so that we are going to sell that too and give all that money to the nonprofits as well. It's awesome. A hundred percent buy one. We raise like 500 bucks on those. We'll divide it over the 13 so that sort of a fail safe too. Like if no donations come in during this concert, we can say like, well, we still got some money for you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was really uh, great of him. And it, it, you know, so often I'm flying it by the seat of my pants in this organization and don't take a step back to think what other aspects could be uh build into this and stuff like that so it's great to have uh people paying attention and sending in messages with suggestions or things like that too and yeah stuff and well if you're doing that something that is truly if you're doing something that is truly your unique or hard or you truly are innovating or essentially taking the risk of saying you know to to paraphrase seth godin here i made this i hope you it, i hope you like it not knowing a hundred percent if it's going to work or not or whatever, right? Like if you're, if you're living on that edge, then you're always going to be just a little bit overwhelmed. And in some yep. cases, maybe a lot of bit overwhelmed. And so um, I think there is no like innovation in, in that respect, right? If we can agree on, on that definition of innovation, there is no innovation without flying by the seat of your pants, without missing things, without having blind spots. Right. Yeah. Cause yeah. that's like the whole, the whole purpose is to like kind of go into an unknown space for you and for other people. Um, and, uh, that's st something that I'm still learning to be comfortable with. And, um, I'm, I'm slowly getting there, 
but uh, I feel that way all the time that I'm always, because any one person, depending on, you know, what they do for a living or what they're really good at, they could look at any aspect of my operation, right? Whether it is um, how I deliver services to clients um, or what I do from like project management or accounting or marketing, right? Or this, which I don't know how much I even want associated with my business or not yet. Right. And mm-hmm. um, they could probably be like, like you, right. When, I, when we emailed about this, you gave me a couple quick tips on, you know, how to make the podcast better because you, especially from a production standpoint, because you've done one. Right. And so, um, you know, I think it's, I think it's very easy to get, to get caught up in the overwhelm of all the things you could have done or should have done or whatever it could be doing better. Um, <clears throat> but you know, that's just going to be the reality of it when, when you're trying to throw on a, a concert, a, a, a concert in a format that's never been done, right? Or, you know, has rarely been done uh, on short notice to benefit a cause and you're bringing in 15 million stakeholders. Like, that's just, that's just how it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of herding cats uh, for this production. But, yeah, exactly. Uh, what it's, what it's also going to require today is uh, creeping around multiple college campuses looking for <laughs> A speedier internet um, because the internet we're working off of from home is is great for zoom it's great for downloading but when it's, it comes to uploading uh at least in my neighborhood every 15 minutes takes about two hours and oh, we've gee. Got yeah four platforms to hit with with uh nine uh 30 minute videos so or six seven eight i don't know anymore but uh yeah it's gonna be today and tomorrow are gonna be pretty funny uh, but it's going to come together one way or another. That's uh, awesome. I have multiple I have no computers doubt. at my disposal, and I may just be in the backseat of my car with all three uploading uh, at all times uh, right before the show starts. But it, I think one way or another, it's going to be pulled off, and it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, with a good cause in mind, sure. But do we also hope that this is a uh, opportunity for us to introduce Rise to a new audience, absolutely, and hoping that that can come from fans of those nonprofits or fans of those bands, and that they stick around and uh, see what what else Rise has to offer, either by going through our former library or seeing what comes up in the future. Um, and that's all we really hope to get out of it is that people are like, oh yeah, Rise is doing good stuff. Uh, that that'd be a happy day for me. Yeah, well, if I'm going to get this whole thing out with enough time to potentially get some more eyeballs to your concert and support you and support all these wonderful organizations that you're supporting, um, I'm going to have to uh, wrap up this conversation soon. So before we do that, why don't you give like a final, like what's your quick elevator pitch on the Queen City Quarantine concert? Tell them what it is. Tell them how they can, uh, how they can find it and, and why they should absolutely make some time Saturday night at seven. Sure. Well, I'll first uh, thank you very much for having the opportunity to just talk about Rise and its background. Every time I do this, it's, uh, it puts a lot of things in perspective. So I really appreciate that and appreciate uh, whoever's watching for checking it out. Um, and then, yeah, this concert. So Rise Collaborative, we have a Facebook um, and our Instagram. We're going to be using the Instagram TV function there. Um, and obviously we have a YouTube as well. And on Facebook and YouTube, you can set it up on your computer and you can cast it to Chrome devices or things like that in your home, uh, it, your Amazon Fire, et cetera. So you can turn this onto your TV and get it cranking. And as soon as one ends, every 30 minutes it'll end, uh, you can go right back to that source and we'll have our next episode up and our next episode up. So, but if you're you know, with your phone only, hop on Instagram TV and watch the whole thing there. And you're going to see big name artists from Buffalo, like uh, Humble Braggers. Um, we also have a band called Liminal Space Ensemble, which is made up of people from uh, the Buffalo Philharmonic and the Buffalo Chamber, Chamber Orchestra. Then we have a couple acts like uh, Zach Ward, Carrie Fay, who are always putting together shows and heading up on stage with their guitar. Um, wild uh, woman named Little, Little Cake, who put together the most fun I've had watching music in such a long time. Uh, so every act is going to be offering something different. Some people are doing covers. Some people wrote music specifically for this moment in our history. And yeah, you're going to learn about all sorts of nonprofits like Volunteer Lawyers Project, Western New York Book Art Center, but also 
uh, feed more and push Buffalo. Um, and you'll be invited to support them however you can. Uh, one of our artists reminds everyone that no donation is too small, especially at a time like this. If you set a goal to go through and give every artist a dollar and every nonprofit a dollar, and everybody who did that, uh, who watched did that, we'd be looking just fine right here. Uh, but if you've got more to give, please do and help these organizations continue to provide the good news that we're looking to find in moments like this. They are doing the great work in the community uh, that can either make you feel good or gives you an opportunity to volunteer and join them. Um, they need your support very badly right now. And same for these bands. As I mentioned before, you turn to them when you need comfort or when you need inspiration. You're turning to the music that bands like these are producing. Um, so give them your support too. And then just have fun. As you said, put your feet up, grab a beer, and uh, enjoy the show. It's, it's really going to knock your socks off. These, these musicians are incredible, and it's going to make you very proud of your city and its uh, artistic acumen here. I mean, for one, this is a very unique production in a very unique, during a very unique time. So it's very memorable. And, you know, for a second point, like what else do you have to do <laughs> on a Saturday yeah, night? Exactly. So, <laughs> so this is awesome. Um, Kevin Heffernan, Rise Collaborative and the Queen City Quarantine Concert, uh, which will be Saturday, April 25th at 7 p.m. Uh, in the year of our Lord, 2020. Um, <laughs> dude, thank you so much for talking about this, sharing a little bit more about you. I really appreciate it. And, um, you know, maybe we'll do it again. Awesome. Thank right, you so much. Cheers.